Well, first of all, we, we should wonder why is it that we're repeatedly uh, expressing these things in songs, in poetry, in, in novels, in motion picture, move, everything. We're, we're, we, we revisit these subject matters repeatedly. Right? People find themselves in a position where they're expressing eternal love to someone. When we know statistically, objectively speaking, it's not true. Right? And mostly, and as time goes on, it's more and more not true. Sure. You know, we're not, not sure how much it was true before. But we at least, now that we keep records on all this stuff, we know the potential for these eternal relationships to dissolve. Good yeah, or for, you know, I love you forever or until you're 40. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> until you're fat. <laughs> right, right. You know, so there are many different objective I cr criteria that somehow, uh, you know, uh, destroy, dissolve that love. And we're still hankering for this eternal love scenario. So then, then what are we doing? You yourself are saying it's not a thing of this world. But stop for a second. We didn't say it's impossible to connect with. We're saying it's not a thing of this objective world. The, the, what, what is expressed in those stories, that eternal love that's in the song, the story, the movie, etc., is not really a thing of this world. So, oh, that's just in the movies. Right. But does that mean there's not a plane where it, there's, it doesn't exist anywhere, not even in the movies? No, so we understand. So we're hardwired to seek this, to seek something that we're trying to address through objective culture. In the object so it's a purely subjective thing that we're trying to feed objects to. 